Now, welcome to part two. So what we're going to do is quickly take off this wheel. This is 24 mil. expecting to see that. I have to change the calipers but I'm also going to have to change the pads and discs as we can see they're really really bad. This is what happens with discs. They stay good for ages and literally they can do it more or less overnight where they because they basically rust from the inside out and this is all the shiny bit peeling off it's just pure rust at the back and it goes all bumpy, lumpy and horrible. So, I'm going to have to change the pads and the discs and the calipers. So let's get cracking. Right, the first thing you want to take off, and I always forget to do it, is take off the little uh, bolts that's holding on the disc. Uh, it's easy to do it when the actual caliper's on. Now, sometimes it's tight, sometimes it's not. Sometimes, even if it is tight, if you, it's a T40 uh, torque, by the way. And sometimes it is tight. If you just give it a good quick shock like that, you will get it now. Not all the times, but sometimes. This is also from memory serves, is a wind back caliper, so I can't push the piston back and I have to wind it back. So now I've done that, I need to undo the 15 mil, give me 14, 15 mil spanner, please, Sean. Whip off the, cal the caliper, the carrier, and then take off the discs, and then bang everything back on. Actually, I don't have to wind back these calipers, because I've got new ones. Sorted. Right, so it's a 13, as it turns out. So, let me just undo them first. There we go. Now, it's best to crack both of them first because if you completely undo one and take the bolt out especially if you take the top bolt out for example like this the caliper not well, this one but the caliper can tend to move and when you're trying to undo this bottom one can be quite difficult so crack them both it just makes your life so much easier so that's 230 mils bolts out of the way now we just need to take that out of the way. As we can see, the camera's showing this, but it is a wind back, hopefully this is coming through, it is a wind back caliper, but like I said, we don't need to do that because we're changing the caliper. Pads are shot, but even if the pads weren't shot, the discs are shot. So, and this is a good example that's coming through on camera. You can see the grooves that it takes. So if you were to put new pads on this disc, which you'd be stupid too, but if you did, it wouldn't take long for it to, to literally cut that groove into the new pad. So then you decide a week later, oh, I'm going to change the disc. Well, you have to change the pads again because the pads are completely uneven and you'll get vibrations and all sorts. So when you do it, you just do everything together and you sort it. Now we have the carrier on, which is most probably a 19 or 21. Get me 19 and 21 socket, please, Sean, and the big long ratchet. So it's actually an 18 mil. So let's whip off both of these. Oh, that's not good. Doesn't feel very good at all, that bolt. Has it been rounded before? It doesn't feel. There we go, we got it. Again, you want to loosen both of these as well before you go any further. And now they're loosened, I get my little air up. Oh, 
dropped it. No harm to give these a bit of a wire brush as well just to keep them nice and clean. So the carrier now comes off. Again what you want to do wire brush these where the actual pads go on. Wire brush and copper grease. Now we just need a hammer. All the crud and crap over the years has just kind of sealed this on a little bit. But nothing. A hammer won't solve. So, that's it. The disc is off. Now I have to wait till tomorrow before I can get the new discs. So there's not a lot I can really do. I suppose I can put on the caliper, but no point really. So yeah, look, I'm going to uh, get the parts, continue this video tomorrow. Right, we can continue. This is only a few seconds for you, but it's the next day for me. I have the parts, so what I'm going to do first is just to make it easy for me, I'm going to put the caliper on, because there's no disc or anything else in the way. Now, we have a nice shiny new caliper. Now when you're buying two calipers, you want to make sure you obviously get them the right way, because sometimes they are marked left and right, but sometimes they're not. The easiest way to kind of know is just imagine once you have the caliper on the bleed nipple has to be at the top not at the bottom unless it has two bleed nipples and then you're okay next thing you visually want to do is just make sure everything is right so it looks right the bleed nipples are in the same place where it actually connects to the car is in the same place or the brackets look right you know just kind of visualize it make sure it's all okay the problem we're having with these ones, which happens a lot with these vehicles, is the handbrake part, the springy part here, seizes. Now you can see this moves up and down nice and freely. Now um, you can free these out, but they don't last. They might last six months then they'll just kind of seize up again. Um, so it's best, once that starts happening, just to replace them. It's a lot easier. I have freed them out before. Like I said, you might be lucky to get a year out of them, but they gradually get seized and seized as time goes on. So what we need to do first is we need to clamp the, the actual pipe going to the brake caliper with our special clamp here. This is designed, this locks, as you can see it locks, but also is designed not to do any damage to the pipe. Because when you use vice grips and stuff like that, it can, can do damage. Now I need to get this as high as possible. So I'm just going to pull the spring back and literally just push that on, just like that. And then just slide this up, simple as that. Now I can actually release the uh, pipe and I also need to release the handbrake cable. As you can see, also you obviously need to make sure the handbrake is down because if the handbrake is up it's going to make it harder for you. This, as you can see, is seized on even now, which to be fair will make our life a lot easier. You can see how I've just pulled that cable. I've just pulled the cable out, so it means I can unhook this nice and simple. I shouldn't be able to do that. This should be, I don't know if I can move it down by hand. No, it needs to go even more, but as you can see, it moved, but it won't spring back like the other one. So, I've now disconnected that. So it's actually it's a lot easier now it's seized to do that. And I'm going to take off the uh, brake pipe now. Right, it's 15 mil. This, to be fair, normally is... Well, that's, that's gone all right. Normally it's easier to loosen that when the caliper is on because you bolt the caliper on and it means you're not having to hold it. I was lucky enough I kind of got away with that, but it's just a lot easier to take that off when the caliper is on the door. What I need to do now is there's a little clip that's holding the handbrake cable. So if I can just hope we get that clip out. No, I'm gonna have to 
so maybe get a screwdriver at that. Unless I'm lucky enough. No, I'm to get a screwdriver. So flat brain screwdriver should just now come out quite easy. Hopefully this is coming through. Oh, that's what you don't want to happen. That went flying. Now, nice little clip I took off. Now, with the new caliper, you get everything but that little clip, so you don't want to lose the clip like I nearly did. So, this should now just pop out quite easy. Now, it's no harm at this stage to check your handbrake cables. These were recently changed in these, so I know it's okay. Should be nice and free. Because if they're seized, it will hold on the brake, which then seizes the brake. Now these calipers are still working. It's just the handbrake side of them is seized. This, this side here. Because old age and these cables were seized, which kept these on, which then just basically did whatever it did inside. So, it's just a good thing to check, especially on these things. Now, I need to spin the whole caliper around. Now with most calipers, you have to take it off completely to actually take this pipe off. As you can see, I'm spinning the caliper. You can't spin the pipe because you'll twist the pipe. So the caliper has to come off. This is the caliper here. This is the wine back. And this is the spring here, which I can't even move now. But I moved it up and it just stayed there, as you can see. So, yep, definitely time to change it. So, caliper. Now you normally get these little bungs in them just to stop all crap and stuff getting into it. So now that's the same way. Well actually what I might no, I have to do this first. So just screw it in. Can be a bit tricky this. Because you have to hold the weight of the caliper and also get that in square. Now it's in. I can just screw it all the way home. Make sure it is tight, which again can be quite hard. Now that's in, but what I'm going to do once I get it on, I got it tight as I can, but once I get it on, just give it a little bit of a nip. But you don't want to be doing it too much because you'll cause the pipe to twist. So I can release this now. Let the fluid flow. Now what I want to do, so that's basically the way the caliper goes. And as you can see, and I don't know if it's coming through on camera, but as I, if I twist it that way, I'm twisting the pipe. So you, you, again, you need to make sure you've got this the right way. Now, so, we know this is basically the way it goes and we can see the pipe is where it should be don't hit your head like I just did and we're then sorted so what I've got to do now is put the handbrake back which on this one is going to be harder because we have the spring in it but having said that still might be all right, because I can push it with my hand. Now, I'll try and do this without getting in the way. I'm going to basically try and push it back like that, which is quite easy to be fair, and then just slip this cable underneath and around in it, and then we'll be sorted. But we just could do with a bit more cable, which we don't have. Oh, the joys. Put it under there, maybe. There we go. Now it's in. So I put it underneath, push it together, and it just clips back. But as you can see now, this is going backwards and forwards really easy, which the other one just wasn't doing. So we know when we pull the handbrake, 
be nice and easy to pull that and it will release. Kind of says what it does on the tin. So we've got to make sure as well we don't get these pipes crossed over each other so we know we're in line there and like I said that comes to about there. There's no twist in the pipes. We're sorted. Now we need to put the brakes back on. New ones. Shiny new ones. So new shiny disc. What you need to do is you need to match it up with the old one again, make sure the hole's in the right place, make sure it's the right thickness and the right height. Some are solid, some are vented, so you just want to make sure you get it right. So I'm going to line up the little hole, the little screw hole, with the screw hole in the disc. And literally just bang it on like that. Simple as that really. One thing you also need to do is <clears throat> when you get a new disc, you get this protection on it. It's to stop it going rusty when it's in the package. So you need to get some brake cleaner and clean it off. And uh, yeah, very simple. Just clean it off with brake fluid and then you're sorted. So it's a T40. I'm just gonna put this back on. T40 torque. So I'm gonna put it back on. Give it a spin, make sure it's nice and straight. Look down this end and make sure it's not wobbling so that it's sitting. We know it's sitting flush, which is good. And obviously it goes without saying, once you do one side, always do the other side. And that goes with anything on the car. I know it's down to money, but if you're doing it yourself, you're saving yourself the labour so you can spend a few more quid on parts and you're getting more of the work done. So important to do brakes both sides. Don't don't even try and scrim pack. Just do them both sides. Preferably, it is good to do it with calipers as well. If you put one caliper on, the other caliper is going to be older. Might not be working as good. Second-hand calipers. Certain cars, yes, go ahead, no problem. This particular, the Renault Masters and that type, the the handbrake cables give too many problems. The, the, well, not the handbrake cables, but the handbrake on the caliper. You get a second-hand one. There's the most of a chance it sees. So. With this one, unfortunately, I wouldn't go for second-hand one. But certain cars, yeah, no problem. You can get second-hand brakes, no problem. Uh, no, second-hand calipers, sorry, not second-hand brakes. You never get second-hand brakes. Never, never, never. Now, what we need to do is put the carrier back on. Now, we need to do a couple of things with this. We need to make sure these are moving in and out, which they are, as you can see, very nicely. And we need to clean this but what we actually get and then if you got when you get a new caliper you get the new pins so we've got new pins and we've got new rubbers now you might as well use them because if these pins seize then your brakes aren't going to work so you get new pins new rubbers new everything and you even get grease. So what we're going to do is literally just pull this out, just like that. Now it's no harm to keep these, because you never know when you might need them. So what I'm going to do first is, I'm just going to push it in, we're putting no grease, to try and seat the, uh, which is not working now, I might try it with that. This little seal I want to get inside there to make sure it's in because again, there we go, if that's got a hole in and water and crap gets in it's just going to cause you problems with the pins which you don't need for obvious reasons. So on the two pins as you can see there's a slight difference. This one's the same thickness all the way down, this one's got a little kind of groove cut into it. And what you need to do on the old pin is take off this little rubber magaji doody thingy and literally slide it on your new one. 
can be a bit fiddly <laughs> can be very fiddly but basically that should there we go look just slide it on sorted now we need to grease it up and again you want to make sure that that goes back in the right place so when you take them off make sure you look if that goes on the top or the bottom this grease don't be afraid to use it just a bit of lube can't beat a bit of lube this one might be a bit tricky to go in with that little rubber bit there but it, it will go in now I need to seal this little seal on there and the easiest way to do that is just push and as you can see it's completely it's sealed here and it's sealed there there's grease in it and we're sorted so exactly the same with the other one I'm gonna put it in this way sometimes it is easy to put the pin in and, and kind of force this in but on this particular case it seems to be going in a lot easier without me doing that new pin new grease I mean when you're changing brake pads anyway and this it's always best regardless to take these pins out clean them and grease them even if they're moving uh, it's always best to do it now if they're completely seized obviously but regardless whether the seas are moving just replace them because you will be saving yourself a lot of problems now again that just goes in push it and as we can see nice and free and we're sorted lovely now I'm gonna get a wire brush and just clean here and here where the pads sit and then I'm gonna put some copper grease in there as well so all been oh all the way all been greased up lubed and cleaned so need to do now is literally bang it back on just need to line that up get me bolts So it's just the two bolts from behind, nice and easy. Obviously, give these a good squeeze. You don't want them coming loose. That wouldn't be uh, fun at 60 mile an hour. All right, so I've tightened that up, two 18 mil bolts. We're just left with the actual pads now. So what I like to do is just put a bit of grease here and here. But obviously we've already put it in there so it's kind of pointless i like to put these in first just to make it a little bit easier on your on your hands because um if you put all copper grease there straight away when you come to um when you come to actually put them on you can get kind of grease everywhere so And the last thing is just get this right, make sure the pipes aren't twisted, so they're not. And of course, that's come out. Obviously, as I was pumping the handbrake, I've slightly pulled this out. Not a big deal, we'll wind that back. We'll wind it back and uh, yeah, get the brake sorted. Now, the tool I've got for the job this is an air brake winder backer. 
number six is the number for this particular one out of this particular set which is a beta and these things are brilliant this is the slightly newer one the one the older one didn't recess fully as you can see that's recessed fully the older one stuck up a little bit just like that which makes it a lot harder to get in if, if the brake was kind of anyways out that just goes on to there so this, this clips into there because there's different uh, depending on the brake caliper there's th these lugs are different and it is literally as simple as getting that in pressing it to turn the air turn it to line up with the gaps inside the caliper I press that the air is now pushing against it so I'm all I've got to do is twist it rather than trying to twist and pump together and hopefully if this is coming through and it's just as easy as that push it all the way back it can't go anymore and that's it it's as simple, oh, simple as that I've done videos on how to wind back pistons anyway but uh, at least that gives you another idea this should now fit and it does just push these back as we can see now I just want to double check to make sure these pipes aren't twisted or anything like that and they're not one thing I did forget to do is put this little clip back because we don't need the handbrake cable coming out so just push that in sorted uh, you get new bolts as well for the caliper and there's some Loctite already pre onto it so I don't have to do anything just screw them in, line them up and screw them in so as we can see that one's in and number two now what I am going to do before I forget is just give the brake line that little bit of a squeeze now I only got a tiny bit on it but that's all I needed and it, it is easier to loosen it when it's like that as well so before you take everything off which I didn't do just give that a bit of a loose don't take it off just loosen it clamp the pipe and it just makes it a lot easier for when you're putting it back or when you're taking it off sorry rather than doing it the way I did it so tighten up these which are 13 now you have to be careful because these do need to be tight but you can very easily round them so you do have to be careful or you can damage the threads inside the pins so just like that and that what we have to do now is basically breed breed bleed the brakes now I've done videos on how to do this I have a machine that means I can do it on my own but it's leaking so it's not working what I'm going to do is there's no one here at the minute but basically the way you do it you pump your brakes it's best to do this before you take the other caliper off so do one at a time get someone to pump the brake pedal until it goes hard release the bleed nipple air and fluid will shoot out they keep the pedal down you tighten the brake fluid you tighten the the uh, caliper nuts and you pump it you might have to do that two or three times for all the air to come out you'll know when the air has come out because basically after maybe one or two pumps the brake pedal goes hard instantly I'm not going to show it on this video because like I said I've got no one with me and I've already done other videos on how to bleed brakes but that's basically what you do so that's going to be the end of this as you can see we've put new brakes, new calipers, new shoes on nothing really to it sorted, simple enough and uh, should keep this going for a few more miles also another good thing just to make sure this does move around, it's not jamming or anything so yeah look, hope it helps, thumbs up and subscribe and don't forget, get your hands dirty, see you for the next one.